Hello friends, I'm Father Frank Pavone, National Director of Priests for Life. I've already announced a special project we're collaborating on with Life Dynamics and our friends at Operation Rescue. It's called Safe and Legal and it focuses on the story of Marla Cardamone, killed by a so-called safe and legal abortion. Well, some years ago, I met her mother, Deborah, and Deborah was interviewed by me on our EWTN Defending Life program. And so I went back and got a clip from that program, and I'd like you to watch it here. Our thanks to EWTN for permission to use this clip. You can visit them at EWTN.com. Let's listen to now and spread the story of Marla Cardamone. Hello, this is Father Frank Pavone, Director of Priests for Life. Welcome once again to our Defending Life series. Abortion in America is legal, but it isn't safe. And today we're going to see that that is true in a dramatic way as we interview two women whose daughters obtained so-called safe and legal abortions, but whose lives in one case were ended and in the other case was changed forever. I want to welcome you, Deborah Cardamone and Kay Style, to our program. Thank you for coming. Mm -hmm. We have sad stories to talk about here, but in sharing those stories, your courage and your faith and your willingness to come here are going to help a lot of people, are going to help a lot of people to see that abortion has more than one victim. And so, Deborah, your daughter Marla obtained a legal abortion, so-called safe and legal. Tell us what happened. My daughter was 18 years old when she found out that she was pregnant for the second time. And her psychiatrist had recommended that she look into the side effects of her medication before she'd continue ha this pregnancy. Um, my daughter was taking Elevil and Tegretol for depression at the time, mm. and he, he had told her that they can cause heart and brain damage to, to a baby. So um, we were sent to a big local hospital that specializes in all kinds of care for women. And um, the medical social worker scheduled a sonogram for my daughter and a therapy session with her to discuss her, discuss her options. And you were aware of all this as it was happening? Yes, I was. Okay. Yes, I was. Um, abortion was not her first choice. Her choice was adoption mm. because she had already had a two-and-a-half-year-old son living at home with my husband and myself. So um, the medical social worker scheduled the sonogram, scheduled another session, and what they didn't allow was, they didn't allow me to attend any of these sessions because she was 18 years old and she wasn't, she didn't need her mother is what the social worker told me. Um, she needed me for everything else at home, but here she did not need me. So abortion was not her first uh, desire. Uh, how no. did it come about that she did obtain the abortion. Well, she was so severely depressed after finding out that she had caused this child damage that um, she more or less was driven in her own depressed state to say there was no there was no hope for this child and there was nothing we could do for this child. And did you know that she was obtaining the abortion? Yes, both my husband and I knew. Um, even though we told her we would take the chance of her having the baby and we would accept the baby as our uh, or as our next grandchild, she did not have to do this, but we would be there because we love her, mm -hmm. and that's how we tried to be supportive to her in that way. She was loved uh, so much that we were we were worried for her state of mind. How far into the pregnancy was she when she uh, obtained the abortion? Well, the sonogram said it was 17.6 weeks, mm -hmm. and um, she she was devastated. She did not really want this abortion, yet the social worker would not give her genetic testing either to prove did the medication indeed harm the baby or not. Mm -hmm. And so for the last two weeks of her life, she couldn't make up her mind about having this abortion. All she did was cry. Mm -hmm. She cried in the last two weeks of her life. And what happened when she got the abortion, and how did you first come to know that uh, something had gone wrong? Well, I had gone in with her into the hospital. They had um, taken her into a room at about 10 of 1, and they inserted laminaria, and they did a urea installation uh, on her. 
and then she walked back down to the room. They have a special unit in the hospital that's strictly for abortion. Mm. Um, it's high tech, they, they call it high tech. Um, so she came, when she came back, she said to me, Mom, that really hurt. And um, I, I was afraid for her, but I stayed with her. And I um, stayed with her till 11 o'clock that evening. And I kissed her goodbye told her I loved her and that she would call me and that was always our our agreement she would call me if anything went wrong mm -hmm. and she said yes I said three o'clock in the morning it doesn't matter she said yes mom you know I'll call you yes so um, I had gone home at about 9 15 the, the next day the phone rang and it was a nurse from the intensive care unit at the hospital she said to me something went wrong with the procedure and it's very very serious and I'm screaming this to my husband, who's standing there. I rushed, got dressed, rushed in, into the hospital within 20 minutes, and I um, went up into the intensive care unit, and they pushed me out of the unit. They pushed me out of the unit and put me into a room where they could control me. They did mm -hmm. not want me to see her mm -hmm. at that point. And I begged and begged to see my daughter, let her know I'm here. And I kept, they kept telling me they were preparing her for surgery. Mm. And, um, of course, all, at that point, all I could do was pray for her. Yes. And, and try to remain as calm as possible. Yes. Then what happened? Well, the doctor came out several times. And uh, one of the times he came out, he asked me, did I have any other children? And I said, no, Marla was an only child. And uh, he got very uh, nervous and I begged again to see her and he left the room again and then he came back in again and I asked him does my daughter have brain damage and he said yes she does at this time and she was in a coma and she was unresponsive she was she was dying and they weren't telling me she was dying mm -hmm. so what happened was she died in a room full of strangers when she could have died in my arms yes what went wrong with this abortion well, after she died, and I got to look at her files, um, what had gone wrong was initially she had told them that she had a vaginal discharge. And when you, ha when you have a patient that says that, you need a test immediately to see what this infection is. Mm -hmm. this, uh, this type of an abortion then would have been contraindicated. She, she would, should not have had the lamis cells inserted. She should not have had the procedure at all without a test first to see if she needed antibiotics first. So what they did was they pushed the infection that she had into her uterus. The um, dying baby uh, was already a breeding ground for the bacteria to grow and grow. And what had happened was she um, developed uh, horrible complications, um, septicemia, clostridia, DIC, uh, where the blood will not clot, um, horrible, horrible complications. Her temperature soared, her heart rate soared, she couldn't breathe, she was um, full on full life support systems. Mm -hmm. um, and then they tried uh, about four hours after they discovered she was in bad shape. They, they tried to give her massive quantities of antibiotics all too late, and they gave her about 27 units of blood all too late. Mm -hmm. We uh, are, are going to show a, a picture that, uh, that uh, has not been shown before. You, you saw already a picture of Marla, and uh, now we want to show you a rather gruesome and uh, horrifying picture of uh, the same girl after this abortion killed her. And brothers and sisters, as we, as we experience the horror and the grief of seeing how destructive abortion can be, we can be filled with anger, and rightly so, because these tragedies don't have to happen. And again, we're grateful to you, Deborah, for, for sharing this with us.